God, tonight, somebody needs to proclaim your name in their life, in the situation that they're going through. Somebody needs some confidence to make it through this week. Somebody needs your guidance and your directive. Somebody needs your perspective. No, oh, that I'm going to make it this week. And so, God, let your, we can make a claim your name. Uh, we've, we've, we've taken three from three different people in the Bible. The first three came from Moses in his tight spot at the Red Sea. And then the second three came from David in his tight spot standing before the Philistine uh, giant Goliath. And so we're looking at the third three. And uh, the third three characteristics come from uh, the life of Abraham. And so tonight we want to look at how faith was Abraham's key to passing the test of making the right choice in his tight spot that he found himself in at Mount Moriah. And so the situation, uh, very quickly, just as a reminder, you know, was that God had made this covenant with uh, Abraham that he was going to be the father of many nations. And that's a good thing, except he didn't have a son. And so God can do anything. Nothing's too hard for God, Right? And so when Abraham was 100 and Sarah, his wife, was 90, they had a son that they named Isaac. And Isaac was the pride of Abraham's life. And then God said to him, Abraham, sacrifice your son. That son you love as an offering. Oops. And so we think, why in the world would God say something like that? What? scripture tells us. Genesis 21 and 1 says God tested Abraham's faith and obedience. Now it wasn't a test for God. God already knew the outcome. Okay? That's where we get hung up. (laughs) It wasn't a test for God. God was testing Abraham's faith. It was for his sake. And we need to remember that because oftentimes our tight spots just might be God testing our faith. The Bible clearly tells us that God uses tests to allow trials to happen in our lives. Why? For our own spiritual development, our own spiritual maturity, and our own spiritual growth. And James said, you'll always have your trials. But when they come, treat them as a happy privilege. Don't resent them as intruders, but welcome them as friends. Realize that they come to test your faith and to produce in you the quality of endurance. We always seem to want God to spare us to difficult times and the um, tight spots of our life. But you know what? That's the only place you'll ever find real growth in your life. Real growth doesn't come in the good times. Good times is just for fun. Life is just settling along. Real growth comes when you have obstacles that you meet and you take those obstacles on and you overcome them. That's where growth comes from. Amen? And so that's how we get prepared for what Satan throws at us. By learning to pass the tests that God allows before us. And so tonight I want to continue... On, the, on Abraham's faith being the key to passing the test. Despite his tight spot, Abraham believed that God was faithful and that God was faithful to his word. And so God was going to be faithful to that covenant that he would promise him, that he would be the father of many nations. So he's in a tight spot, but he's believed. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for just that little note right there. In the midst of the tight spots, to believe. To trust that your word is true. That even if it didn't turn out the way we want it, you are true to your word. And so God, help us develop that kind of faith. For we pray it in Jesus' name. And all God's children said... Amen and amen. Last week, um, Jonathan, uh, Deacon Jonathan shared with you the seventh of those nine characteristics and um, looking at this, and he started with what is the sixth or the seventh? That would be the se- six. That would be seventh. I can't count. 
It would be the seventh of the nine. All I know is the last three, okay? Uh, and, and he started out by telling us that, number one, we have to do what? Uh, put it up there, dear. Number one. Okay. I must live with what? I've got to learn to live with confidence. Faith uh, is the biblical word for confidence, okay? Confidence is the result of someone's life that uh, lives, someone who lives his or her life with faith. And so confidence is faith in action. Faith in action. Now, you might ask, you won't see an uh, example of it. You look at Genesis 20, uh, uh, 22, 1 and 2. It says, Abraham, God called, take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering. Verse 3 says, the next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took, on one of his ser- took one of his servants with him along with his son Isaac. And then he chopped wood and to build fire for a burnt offering and set out for a place that God had told him to go. Where's the confidence in that? He got up. I suspect if God said that to me, I'd stay in bed. <laughs> but Abraham got up. Abraham had confidence in who God was. And and so the result of that, the result of a person who lives with confidence is is what? Perspective. Perspective. You get a different perspective. Uh, Confidence allows you to rise above, as Jonathan said, rise above that uh, 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 your tight spot. And so Abraham looked to God for faith so long that by this time he had developed a new perspective. That superseded even his love for his own son. And, and, and that's, that's, that's some, of us, some of us, that's hard to take. But Abraham looked to God and Abraham had a, a perspective. Somehow God's going to 